So all of these channels then are routed to a group I call LV Comp. Um, I'll go to my mixer here. Now LV Comp looks like this. First thing is simply a low cut, uh, then a de and then two compressors in a row, which is sort of an old trick, but something I've always used. It's effectively uh, a 1176 uh, into an LA-2A. And, you know, that's a trick I picked up years ago. Um, you know, one kind of has a slightly warmer tone, one has a more aggressive tone. And if they're both doing a little bit, I find that's better than trying to get one compressor that does a lot. And I guess I tend to take that approach a lot of times with compression, whether it's for vocals or um, mastering. I like to just, I guess, try to have compressors doing a tiny bit I mean, obviously there's an exponential effect as those things build up, but it just tends to be a little less heavy handed than one compressor doing too much. So all of those are going into that. From there, they go into a channel I call uh, LV1EQ. This is where I do sort of all the global EQ work on the vocal. Um, you know, in general, verses and choruses, bridges will need their own EQ, but then there might be just an overall top end boost or an overall low cut that just the entire voice needs for the entire song, so that will happen there. And then I split the vocal into two, uh, actually three different channels. So you can see here, I've got it going to three different places, um, which I'll show you now. So we have one which is a doubler, one which is a micro shift, which is a different type of doubler, and the lead vocal itself. So what I'm getting here is I'm getting um, just a clean vocal, which is going to lead vocal one here, which is just a clean sound. And then I'm mixing in these different types of doublers. Now I'll generally use both of them, but in various strengths. Um, this one's a little more subtle, this one's a bit more extreme. Depending on the sound, I'll kind of mix and match these. Sometimes I won't use them at all, and I'm purely just getting the uh, the clean vocal with no doubler sound. But originally what I was doing was I was taking the lead vocal and I would send it out to a doubler effect. What I found over time though was um, that doubler was actually adding a level that then I wasn't really um, accounting for. So you would send it out to the doubler and that would be a channel that would be adding level. And also that doubler wouldn't be getting the reverb, wouldn't be getting the delay um, necessarily. I mean, you can do it that way, but generally I would be sending it out, but effectively just sending out a dry signal of the lead vocal to a doubler and that would just be sitting in my mix as a dry doubled sound. So what I've done now is I'm actually incorporating all of this doubling into one final signal, which is the lead vocal here. Um, on that signal, that's where I'll actually automate my vocal and I use a vocal rider as well. And that's where I'll send out my reverb. So that's effectively my final sound with compression, EQ and doubling, um, which is then, you know, sent off to these various reverbs.